The G20 summit serves as a forum of the world's largest economies, and its focus has traditionally been on addressing major challenges to global economy. To find out exactly what issues the world leaders will discuss at the summit this time around, let's now turn to Dr. Kim Byung-ju, head of KLMP Consulting and a regular commentator on Arirang News. Hello, Dr. Kim. Good afternoon. First off, uh, can we talk about the origin of the G20 summit mm. and its present meaning? Right. Of course, as you may recall very clearly, the origin for the current form of G20 summit meeting itself uh, came from uh, President Barack Obama's call back in 2008. Uh, in, on November of that year, as soon as there was a global scale financial uh, crisis occurred, uh, President Obama put together this gathering of uh, 20 nations, heads of 20 nations, 20 economies to be exact, together in Washington to talk about coordinated response to this global crisis. And there, a lot of discussions went on. And that did not end with that meeting, but went on for a second meeting, G20 summit, second G20 summit in London. And then uh, President Obama brought the uh, gathering back to the United States, Pittsburgh, for the third time. And then uh, Toronto in Canada. And uh, as not a member of the most advanced nations, Korea was the first one, actually, to host uh, its fifth meeting in Seoul, as we all recall, back in 2010. So overall, the origin of this gathering itself is a uh, uh, getting together or, or some kind of forum for world's top 20 economies or 20 most economically important economies gathering together to deal with the global challenges. And that was the whole original idea of this gathering. Of course, now we have uh, changing perceptions and perspective about you know what this actually uh, gathering actually mean and what kind of significance it has, particularly relevance of it, because the 2008 uh, crisis is has uh, you know passed largely, and we have uh, different kinds of challenges and issues. And there is a big question out there whether this particular gathering format actually makes a lot of relevance or makes sense out of it uh, in terms of dealing with all the other challenges. So, uh, you know, in St. Petersburg this time, these leaders face a, this big question of making this gathering relevant. I see. Mm -hmm. So for this year's meeting, though, uh, mm -hmm. six major agenda items are on the table, right. to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. So let's go over them one by one, mm -hmm. perhaps starting with the issue of the U.S. quantitative easing program. Right. Uh, quantitative easing program itself, the changes that will be brought to this program itself also entails a lot of other related uh, issues here, as you can see on the screen. And these three items are actually all uh, related to one another in the sense that these are issues about, about global financial capitalism. What's happening is, uh, you know, this action that has been taken by the United States quantitative easing, uh, that action has increased overall liquidity to the market worldwide. And now it's, it has to uh, tam uh, taper down. And uh, as a result of that, what we will see, of course, because of that, we need these uh, coordinated efforts uh, on those, uh, among those uh, world's 20 leading economies to ensure financial stability, as you can see as the second item there. And also, overall, this all means also a greater need for all of us all around the world to reform the global financial system in order to increase the stability in cases of this kind of changes in the future. So uh, these are all very important items. They all relate to one question of global financial capitalism. Right. Mm -hmm. And also there are other items such as job creation. Yeah, correct? which is uh, pretty new for G20 here. And uh, job creation is always in the minds of lead, uh, you know, the leaders of, the, uh, um, of important economies here. And that is why job creation is, as you can see on the screen, included in their agenda list here. And also tax avoidance. Uh, you know, th there is a greater need for tax revenue for all the major economies around the world because we have to increase our social safety net in terms of as we go ahead with the uh, economic reform and financial structure reform and all that. So for that, we need uh, to secure greater tax revenue. For that, we want to make sure that major important players in the global economy do not dodge their tax responsibilities. So that's included right there. And of, of course, as always, uh, of, as often is the case for uh, global gatherings, of course, the concerns of the developing economies versus developed economies. So how the developed ones can help developing ones, for that, the, that last item is included, and that's no surprise right there.
Going back to the issue uh, on top of the agenda regarding the U.S. quantitative easing program, mm -hmm. so are we expecting any major breakthroughs this time? Myself, for one, as an observer, I do not expect a dramatic uh, action from uh, coming from St. Petersburg this time because it's not an easy question at all. You know, the, the quantitative easing action itself is an action that was necessary to sustain the U.S. economy as one of the key economies for the world entirely, and it was a necessary action. But what he was doing was pumping in 85 billion won every month. It continues even this month, and the United States government is pumping it in pumping in that large amount of money, 85 billion U.S. dollars, into the capital market as a kind of emergency measure. But now it's a sort of like a strong medicine, painkiller. It creates addiction. So financial market is getting used to this, and when they hear that this uh, action needs to taper down, everyone gets scared. So this is kind of like form of drug addiction in a way, to put it in a more strong terms. And so the the drug itself was necessary for securing the world economy. But now, in withdrawing the drugs, there are all these reactions to this. And for that, there is no quick fix to it, indeed. So rather than just the determination and coordination among the economists and coming up with the agreement that they got to do all they can in order to deal with financial uncertainties, other than that, I don't think there's a new quick, quick fix or some kind of alternative medicine that will address this, uh, what I would once again call drug addiction here. Right. I also read uh, that this U.S. quantitative easing program kind mm -hmm. of fractures the global economy, too. Is that a good estimation? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way of describing it because United, uh, the advanced economies, including the United States, their concern is not as big, but it definitely affects the developing uh, economies much more. So that's why it's, uh, they talk about fractions or fractures. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, shift, uh, shifting gears to Korea mm -hmm. for a bit, what can we expect in terms of contributions that President Park and Korea will make uh, at the summit this time around? I suppose that's an important uh, question that we have to deal with here because Korea was the host of the fifth G20 gathering here, and uh, our Korea's expectation for G20 has been always high. This time, you know, once again, they are talking about bridging roles, but uh, I'm not so sure about that because bridging role is something that's always hard to define. Rather. I think the government focus in uh, promoting the relevance of G20 itself as a member of the 20 members joining in. I think it's an important one. If Korea can suggest clear ideas about how to make this G20 gathering more relevant, I mean, as I mentioned before, uh, the gathering itself seems to be losing its relevance as the 2008 uh, crisis is moving on to a new stage of challenges. So if Korea can offer better ideas and clear ideas and, and, and you know more uh, you know advanced definition of about why the world community needs G20 gathering and summits continuously in the future, I think that will be a one critical contribution that we can, uh, the Korea can make. I know President Park will give a uh, lead speech for the second session, second day on the jobs and investment, because Korean government has been doing so much on job creation side. Uh, I don't want to talk about the output outcome yet, but um, you know, with her fresh ideas and good, um, good, uh, you know, uh, creative. Uh, innovative ideas about job creation, if we can share those side as well at the G20, in addition to making G20 more relevant, I think that would be another great contribution that Korea can make. Wow, so the concept creative economy will make a debut on the world stage. Hopefully so. All right, well, Dr. Kim, thank you for sharing your insight with us today, and I will see you tomorrow. Okay, we'll do.